Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to each of you being uh, here today on this very important and interesting uh, topic. And Mr. Wynn, it's good to have you uh, back. Uh, last time that you testified uh, during the subcommittee's uh, hearing on the evolving use of drones, uh, we talked about the UA UAS Center of Excellence's research and FAA's roadmap for integrating UAS in the national airspace system. Following up on that discussion, what areas of research do you believe that the Assure program should be focusing on, focusing on to more rapidly implement routine UAS package delivery system? Uh, the Assure program is, is, is very broad in its scope, uh, doing a lot of different work that's really important to get to more complex operations. Uh, the, 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 I think that one of the biggest challenges we need to solve uh, is, is uh, uh, detect and avoid technologies. Pilots today, myself included, we use, uh, if we're not, you know, in the clouds, we're literally, it is our responsibility to see and avoid other aircraft. That's harder to do when you're not on the aircraft. So uh, we're developing technologies for see and avoid, well clear standards, et cetera, et cetera. All of that work is being led uh, by the Center of Excellence. It's being uh, distributed through uh, uh, some of the best minds in the country uh, and, and a lot of collaboration going on. So I would choose that as probably one of the, one of the seminal technologies that is being developed today. Okay. And obviously those that are flying uh, private aircraft, commercial, they've got to know that something's in that space. And then I guess the, the drones themselves need to be able to realize that they're both in the, the same zone. Is that what you're referring to? That's exactly right. So there, there's, there's, I mean, we're, we're talking about smalls today, under 55 pounds, small UAS. Uh, ultimately, there'll be aircraft of all sizes, and there are aircraft of all sizes already that fly in, in all areas of the airspace. Um, so, you know, it's, there are different kinds of rules in, above 18,000 feet in Class A airspace than we would need below 400 feet where there's very little traffic. Uh, but the drones themselves need to be able to auto, uh, automatically uh, adjust to one another, uh, and they need to be able to adjust to anything not performing in the system or not participating in the system, such as an EMS helicopter sure. uh, or potentially a, uh, an air applicator for, uh, for agricultural purposes. You know, we, uh, we certainly know that the, the drone delivery business idea is not just limited to the United States. Uh, and we've been advised that the Assure program has been contacted by other countries asking for information on its research. How important is regulatory cross-border harmonization to the drone delivery business? It's very important. The, the UTM system, uh, unmanned aircraft system, uh, traffic management that ultimately we're developing, and I think the United States is, uh, through NASA and the FAA, has been leading on. Uh, ICAO, the International uh, Civil Aviation Authority or organization in Montreal, recently launched an initiative uh, with, uh, with NASA. They, they recognize, many member states at ICAO recognize that they, they don't want right. to do this all themselves. Uh, so I think U.S. leadership is going to be critical in, in getting this done. Uh, but clearly, there will be contributions from all over the world. Uh, this is a global phenomenon, this technology. Uh, but I think we're now in, in a place where we can lead. Mr. Chidamber, uh, do you see differences between how the United States treats uh, commercial drone delivery and how drone deliveries are treated in other countries? And with that, is, is the U.S. Uh, ahead or behind uh, other countries in the drone marketplace? Um, on the regulation side, I think the FAA has been slower than uh, their equivalent authorities in other parts of the world. I'm thinking particularly of New Zealand, where we actually uh, deliver Domino's pizza in, uh, in New Zealand, in Auckland, actually. Uh, the approvals came faster. It was based on risk assessment, uh, not you know, just the aircraft, but who's running the aircraft, what controls are there, and so on. So a risk-based analysis of approvals is probably what we require. Great. And I think the FAA is heading in that direction. We'd like to see them go faster towards that goal. And I think we'll get there. And you think the risk assessment is, is key to this? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think the threat from perhaps a hobbyist is greater than a legitimate operator who's running a business and making deliveries for medicine or pizza or whatever it might be. That person's going to be carrying insurance, carrying uh, 
you know, it's their brand, they got to protect all that. So a legitimate business, which is operating under the confines of the rules of the land, are going to be quite cognizant of all of these things. And Thank safety you. is a big issue for them. Thank you very much. My time's expired. I yield back. The gentleman.